Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to this DIY ephemera making for junk journals. So the idea is I started making all sorts of little goodies for, uh, just to have um, a stash of things that I can put into a journal that are ready to go and at the same time using up scraps of papers and scrapbook papers and leftover things from other projects. So all of these things here that you see I created um, in the last two days. So I have so many more ideas. I was going to do just a, one video on all of these, but then I realized, you know, as I kept making and making, I realized that, you know, I have all these ideas. So I'm going to do a series of projects. And the first one today will be making little baggies for junk journals. I will also talk about how you can actually use them in a journal, how you can place them and decorate them and all that sort of good stuff. So at the end of today's session, if you stick around, this is our result. So this is what we made today. We made three bags or four bags. I did forget to mention during our session, this one, for example, here, as you can see, I actually put it through my uh, embossing machine it's not something i happen to have it but if you don't have it there's other ways as i've showed you to embellish and make them look pretty so stick around and i will go through making the little baggies and how you can use them in your projects subscribe if you haven't already so you can see all of the little projects that i'm going to do for the series and also just looking at this journal now i've been meaning to do a tutorial on this cover for such a long time because it looks so beautiful and such a beautiful texture and I just keep forgetting to do it so this will have to go on my list too to do as a tutorial all right well I think we should get started with our baggies let's get to it okay so the first thing you're going to need to do is choose your material so for this sort of stuff I wanted to use something that I can't actually use in the journal so for example as I mean in a journalist pages because they're flimsy so for example this this was some sort of something came wrapped in this I can't remember what but it's like wrapping paper so it's quite um, flimsy so it wouldn't really work well as a page and also you know the pattern on it is very full-on so um, I was thinking what I could use it for and I thought this is a perfect project to use that sort of thing for then I've got this one this was just wrapping of like a craft Oh, I don't know what something was wrapped in this maybe um, wine bottles when you buy wine bottles they come in paper bags or and I do remember that it was uh, you can still see that it's it was crunched up in a few places and for projects like this it works perfectly well um, another thing that I use and I'm going to do one today one of these today this is just butcher paper I think or I, I don't know what the name is but it just looks like this. So this is the sort of stuff that they wrap your salami in and and um, you, when you're buying glassware and stuff, they wrap it in this. This is actually, I think, newspaper paper that hasn't been printed on. So as you can see, it's flimsy, so it wouldn't, wouldn't really work as a journal page. And then I try to find other things that I can use this for. And so yeah, it works perfectly well for this and I'm going to demonstrate using that paper just so you can see that you can really use anything that you've got. Some of the other things you might have in the house is wrapping paper. Perfect. So this one's also a little bit thin flimsy. This is left over from wrapping a present. Um, so something like that will work as well. Then if you have music pages, um, perfect. They will look really cool. In little baggies and then you can just go with paper tea dyed paper you know any paper really okay so I've got this long piece of paper here it's too long and too high to wide so but I just want you to see sort of the process all right so first thing that I want to do is just trim down my paper so that I have the, the size that I want and they can be any size uh, I don't do any measuring and you don't need to either so uh, you will have two ends meeting together in the middle which means that if you place it like this uh, it means that this is about how how wide your paper bag will be so 
let's say I'm just going to do an approximate all right I'm going to cut here sometimes trying to explain something it can be very confusing until you actually see what I mean so this is what I ended up with um, this is way too high for a paper bag but I can rip it later so you've got your piece of paper you can even use those six by six uh, sheets um, that we a lot of us have and don't know what to do with okay and then what you want to do is you want to overlap them slightly somewhere in the middle so I hope you can see how I'm overlapping them slightly okay and just flatten down the edge so just for fun I think I'm going to do what I did with this one and I'm going to scrunch it up I forgot to do that first because I think it looks nice like that so I wanted to do that first but I completely forgot so sorry about that and then I'm just going to put a little bit of ink distress ink just here and there just to age it a little bit and then I can always add more once once I've finished all right so now you would overlap them once you see the construction it'll be so easy next thing I want to do is glue the middle so at this stage I might rip the top so that I don't have to glue the stuff I'm going to rip off anyway I'm going to use my Uhu stick and just put it on the edge and then glue this down so note that I have a straight edge down here and then this edge here that I've ripped so if your edge down here because the next step will be flipping it up if it's not straight you can just cut it with scissors so that you have you know a straight edge next part is the following now we're going to flip this up the bottom part we're just flipping it up just like that and in order to have a really nice back on your bag this is what we're going to do so we flipped it up now we're going to trim the corners just approximately and now so this is the back you can see the fold here I take this flap here and I cut it off because then you don't have to glue two pieces this is optional it doesn't have to be done it doesn't have to be cut all the way to the crease I just want to cut majority of it off and now we are left with just one flap here and this flap now will be flipped up and glued so the reason why I cut this off I don't know if you can see but if you were to flip this up you would have to glue this piece and then you would have to glue this piece on top so just um, if you leave it it box it up and it gives you more work to do so now I'm just going to add my glue And now I have a rather large bag so I think we should make make one more maybe I'll make it from this paper okay so I have my paper this is quite a it would be a very high bag so I am going to trim it down but I'll do that later I want to find the middle so approximately cut that off okay so now I am going to glue the edge and the next thing I do is I flip the bottom up like so I cut my corners And then I cut the inner one here so that I don't have to glue both down. 
so I just flip this one underneath so that I don't accidentally cut that one and then I cut it doesn't have to be perfect and then I put glue on that little flap okay and there's my little bag so they don't look very appealing now at the moment so now we can go ahead and we can do something with them so the first thing that I always do is I ink it up a little bit especially the ripped edge you don't have to have a ripped edge this is something that I like to do you can just have a straight edge and then you can do a little circle here so this uh, the basic construction of the bag you have now seen and now what you do with it is purely all up to your own imagination so I'm going to do this big one and then I'm going to show you because I have a, a rather large journal uh, sitting here next to me so I'm going to show you how amazing this actually looks in a journal Usually when we are in the process of making something, as you are, you know, making it, it doesn't look that great. But then once the project is complete and, and inside a journal and together with other beautiful, amazing creations, it just looks beautiful. Okay, so now I just want to talk about uh, how I decorate the bags. So you will he see here I have little um, uh, clusters. So uh, little pieces of, you know, I have a book page, I have some lace, I have some materials, I have a postage stamp. So it just gives something to the bag. So it draws the eye to that uh, focal point there on the bag. So some of the things, this is just to give you ideas on things that you can do and we'll do one together so and then there's this one and then this one looks really cool I did some of that sequin I just sewed right through on my sewing machine and it looks amazing very boho okay so now let's now decorate these I'm okay so I thought maybe we can decorate um, these four different types of bags together okay so what I usually do is I have some book pages and off cuts bits and pieces and then I have a box I don't know if you guys have one of these two this is where I put all of the stuff that um, little off cuts and bits and pieces from um, journal making process so then I have all of this little stuff that, that I can just dig into and grab bits and pieces when I'm decorating okay so the first thing that I usually do is a book, a book page next thing is I would add maybe a contrasting another little contrasting piece well, I don't know if you would call it contrasting so I would just add a little piece of something else so this is pretty much just making a little clusters so that was a little bit of a tea bag that I had maybe I'll cut a little bit of this fabric so not too much thinking but the idea is to have different pieces so like a book page some sort of maybe tea dyed paper maybe lace so maybe let's do some lace And then right at the end, a focal point. So a bit of lace there, a bit of lace here. And the reason why I'm not doing anything with these because I'm thinking I'm I am going to, I'm thinking I want to make these two bags into one. So I'm actually going to glue this bag on top of that bag, just for something different. So maybe something like that. Perfect. And then maybe for this one I can have. The lace underneath. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. So uh, before I staple them all together and show you what I do, I want to ink all of the edges. So I probably should have done that first, but here we go. 
so this way you can see um, what a difference it makes when you have inked edges it just pops out so much more than when your edges are not inked so that's why I like to ink Okay, so when layering you've got one we've got one piece going this way, one piece going that way, then we've got a a little tea bag here going some other way, and then we have this bit of lace that's a different type of shape to all the other things. So those are the sort of things you might want to, you know, when you're putting your clusters together, just layer them this way and that. And then so that's one done so now what I do all of my pieces I've got them together and I just simply staple it in the middle we don't want to staple it on the bag because then the bag won't be able to be open so we'll staple this one and now let's staple this one Next thing we want to do before gluing these onto the bag is add a focal point. So that can be a die cut, it can be, let's see what I've got. So it can be a flower or a button or, you know, I don't want to use a flower, maybe a button like this. So just something that will cover that staple, one. And see, I've got little tea bags and stuff like that. Uh, and I really, for this project, I loved using postage stamps. So I just have this little piece here that says love. So maybe I can put that one here. That looks really good. Finishes it off. Um, what else do we have? Like I've got little materials like this, you know, in there. I've got a flower. Oh, I'm going to use this flower, but it's pink. So I just want to vintage it up a little bit. And maybe I can actually run a brad through it. Oh, you can't even see. Here we go. And now for this one, let's find something too big. Butterfly. No. Button. Yeah, let's do the button. What do you think? Oh, I don't like the button. Maybe a flower. Yeah, let's do a flower on that one. Okay, so now I am just gluing everything onto the bag. So first I want to glue my focal point onto the cluster and then the next thing I want to do is glue the cluster onto the bag just want to add some uh, middles into my flowers okay so I didn't want to go rummaging too much so I decided to use these little flat stickers probably could have found a better choice but for demonstration purposes this is this will do okay so now because I'm making this large one into a, a double kind of thing what I'm going to do is just glue just this part onto the bag so then that can be used as a tuck spot as well so I'm just gonna glue it I forgot to ink it inking it will make it look better okay so now I think we should go ahead and put a tag inside I just have a little tag here which can't fit of course it's not going to be able to fit into that one
so I'm just going to borrow a tag book from I mean a tag from my tag book just so I can demonstrate how this will look you can have a wider tag in there something like that so there's one filled up um, so the more sort of flaring you've got going on the better it's going to look uh, okay so let's have a look how this is going to look in a journal okay so this is a rather large journal quite big compared to my hand you can see so let's go inside so let's find a little spot where this is going to look nice So for example just there so then what I would do is I would clip it onto a page maybe I would have a little charm like I have some charms here let's see what's happening here do I have something I've got something clipped in all of them so what I would do is I would have a little charm hanging there and then you've got I mean that looks just beautiful in a journal as you're flipping through you come to this little treasure two bags, two tags, tuck spot here, a tag in here. You can glue it on. So instead of just clipping it on, you can glue the edges. So that also becomes a tuck spot. So then you would have one here, one here, one here. Or in case of a single bag, say for example, you've got something like this. And let's say you glue it onto the page. So you just glue these corners here and then you have place for a tag let me just pull this out so I can show you you have a place for a tag here and then you have a tuck spot behind here so it looks really beautiful and it looks really layered on the page and then I hope you guys seeing this I hope that you think this looks beautiful I do during the process of making the bags, you you know, it doesn't look great. Like you think, oh, I don't know how that's going to look. But once the, it, the little project is complete and inside a journal, a journal that has other things going for it, charms and ribbons and stamping and all sorts of stuff, I think it looks really, really amazing and it just adds beauty to it. So that's the idea behind these little baggies um, the decoration part and the, the sizes and you know you can go wild and you can do whatever you you, you can think of really for this project um, so i hope that you liked it uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you for being here and i will see you in my next video bye